Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and this is where I talk about all the bookish things that I love. So for this video, I am going to be talking about some of my favorite female friendships in books. Um, this is one of my favorite things to see in books. I mean, I rely on my <laughs> best girlfriends in my life so much shout out to Alaire and Ellie like I my life would be nothing without you guys um so I love to see this in books where the girls are just really tight and they rely on each other and they can um they always like pick them up when they're down and they are willing to risk many things for that person um and I feel like you have to have that solid knit group of people in order to really like survive and be happy in your life. So I have just a couple, so this is probably just going to be a short video, but I wanted to mention just a few while giving some awesome book recommendations. So the first one, weirdly, a lot of these are historicals, although not weirdly, I feel like in historicals, women were so mistreated that in uh that they needed to band together need to stick together um in order to like get through their lives <laughs> because they aren't allowed to own property or go to all the like fun places um they had to just had very rigid rules so i feel like with a with a tight girlfriend life's a little easier so the first one is actually a trilogy and that is the red rogues from um kerrigan burns devil you know series um so this series is about three different girls each book is about a different girl this is the first one how to love a duke in 10 days this one is alexandra's book this one is my favorite but the second one is called all scott and bothered and the third one is called the devil in her bed and those are about the other two girls but this is a it's just a tight-knit group of these three girls that have been together since uh like boarding school that's since so, so it's like um since they were like teenagers um and they are brought together um or tied together so tightly through secrets um in this book alexandra is raped in the beginning by the headmaster of their school and she kills him while he's raping her and her two best friends cecilia and francesca help bury the rapist in the garden um bury his body and they in order to feel more tightly wound as a group the other two offer secrets of their own and they are willing to do anything for each other i mean your best friend buries a guy in a garden for you you're together for life um but they all three are very damaged very tortured they all have very tragic backstories and because of those backstories they don't feel that they can rely on people but the three of them are like each other's lifelines and I think it's the sweetest most beautiful representation of female friendship that I've seen in a, books in a really long time um and they're just willing to do anything for each other and willing to to stand up for the person make sure that they're okay they're always checking in on each other they they're just it's very very sweet and I would totally recommend this entire book uh this entire series but like I said said there is she is raped in this one um and the other two have very tragic backstories also so there are some trigger warnings just be aware of that before you go in kerrigan burn does write dark historicals so they're not for everyone but they are amazing and the friendships that she creates you really feel them and you really like want to be part of those friendships if that makes sense <laughs> would totally recommend this series the next one is another historical and that is The Secret by Julie Carwood. This is one of my all-time favorite historicals and this one is about a girl named Judith who is English and she um, visits her aunt and uncle in Scotland 
um, every year for this festival. They go to this festival and at this festival when they're, she's a, real, a little girl, she meets Frances Catherine, um, who is a Scottish girl. And they become best friends the way that children do, where they're just like, do you want to be my best friend? And she's like, yeah, let's be best friends. And then they actually stick with it. Um, but as a child, um, they come back every year and they see each other. And that's like Judah's favorite thing is to be able to go to visit her aunt and uncle and go to this festival and see Frances Catherine. So when they're a little older, Frances Catherine, um, what's the word I'm looking for? She confides in Judith that she is terrified to have a baby because Frances Catherine's mom died in childbirth, her grandmother died in childbirth, her aunt died in childbirth. Um, so she is terrified to have a child and she has Judith promise basically to be there with her for when she does have a baby. Um, so basically I want you to be there when I die. Um, and Frank, Judith says, absolutely, I'll be there. I will hold your hand. I'll help you through it. Um, I don't want you to be afraid. So then Judith very much takes this to heart and she spends the rest of her life studying midwifery and learning the best ways to have a child, how you can do it in a more safe way, what not to do, what might help you. And she dedicates parts of her life to learning what she can do to help Francis Catherine. Um, so Francis Catherine didn't realize that Judith was going to do this and Francis Catherine thinks that she is just, she just wants Judith, her best friend, to be there when she dies. And Francis, Judith is like, you're not going to die. I've spent my life studying this. I've got to know all the ways. I'm going to help you with the birth. Um, so then it's years later, they are adults and Judith gets a message from Frances Catherine saying, I'm pregnant, it's go time. I have like two months until I give birth. You're gonna come to the Highlands of Scotland and be with me for the last part of the pregnancy and then the birth. And Judith's like, already, I'm packed, let's go. And they send the leader, the laird of the clan that Frances Catherine lives in and a bunch of the warriors down to England to pick up Judith and bring her back up to the Highlands. Um, to help Francis Catherine and then Judith ends up falling in love with the Laird of the Clan um, which is adorable but not important for this video. We're talking about Judith and Francis Catherine. Their relationship is amazing. The fact that Judith dedicates her life to learning midwifery just so that Francis Catherine will feel more comfortable is fantastic and they love each other so deeply and it's one of those friendships that come from from childhood that comes from that place of innocence where it's like um because Frances Catherine is Scottish and Judith is English and the English and the Scottish don't get along um like Frances Catherine has to petition her clan just to let Judith come visit um so that innocence from childhood where you don't know that something's wrong um or that something is like judged um, until you're told about it is adorable. So she doesn't know to, to not like Scottish people because she's a child and she's like, why would I not like her just because she's Scottish? That makes no sense. Um, or why would I not like her just because she's English? And it's so adorable. This book is amazing. I would 100% recommend, recommend it. The friendship that Judith and Frances Catherine have is shown so brightly through the entire book like long before you even meet the you even know who the love interest is going to be sorry my nose it just long before you even know who the love interest is going to be you see the relationship that develops between Frances Catherine and Judith and it's wonderful would 100% recommend it it's so so good now <laughs> we have another historical um, I promise these aren't all historicals, but we'll do all the three historicals in the beginning. I think I have three historicals. Yeah, three historicals. Um, so this one is the Bridgerton series. Um, specifically, El uh, Penelope Bridgerton, no, Penelope Featherington and Eloise Bridgerton. They have the cutest relationship. I'm going to hold just one up, so we'll hold this one because it's one of my favorites. Um, so this is... Penelope's book 
Um, Penelope and Eloise's relationship can be seen in all of the books though. In the first, you see them introduced in the first book as well. Um, and then continue their relationship on until each of their books. Um, but it is amazing the relationship that they they have the friendship that they have um where they confide in each other they're like neighbors um so they um can see each other quite often and it's very much reflected in the tv show as well there's a netflix tv show based on bridgerton and um i'm so glad that they continued that um that they put that friendship in the tv show because i love seeing it like on screen but while reading it, it was just so, so sweet, especially because um, the Featheringtons, the Bridgerton um, parents, like um, Mrs. Featherington and Mrs. Bridgerton, don't always get along. Mrs. Bridgerton doesn't love Mrs. Featherington. She's kind of a gossip. Um, so for them to like put that aside and for them to be best friends, especially when Penelope is harboring a secret crush on Eloise's brother, Colin, it is adorable and I absolutely love it. They have a ship name. It's called, it's a uh, Penelope's and you can get like t-shirts with it on it and it's the cutest thing. I, I just really, really like it. And it, um, it, these books are, are actually really, really good and I would totally recommend them. Like I know they have a lot of hype now because of like the TV show and everything, but they're actually good. <laughs> I actually like them. Um, this book specifically is one of my favorites in the series so would definitely recommend that and seeing Pe Penelope and Eloise develop their friendship it's really really cute all right the next one I want to recommend I actually don't have a physical copy of and that is the friendship between Belle and Indy in the Harris Brothers series by Amy Dawes I will put a picture of the first book in it that's Indy's book um you can see their friendship in all of the books actually their characters in all of the books but Indy's book is called Challenge it is the first book um and these are sports romances they take place in England um and they are uh football English football romances so it's soccer um what we call soccer in America um but Belle and Indy are both doctors. They both um, became friends while they were having their, I think their residency um, at the hospital. Um, and they are both, they, they talk about this um, time when they were first starting at their residency where they saw something tragic happen in the emergency room and they felt really down and like they weren't sure if they really wanted to be doctors and they really bonded over this um until one of their like attending physicians told them that um like bad things happen um but you have to what you have to do because those bad things happen in order to make yourself in order to make re it realize that like you're making a difference is that you have to celebrate the good times even more um, and so they do this thing called tequila sunrise where they party and drink tequila sunrises, the alcoholic drink, um, um, celebrating anything that like good that happens in their lives. And it's like an excuse to like let go and realize that, um, you have to live life to the fullest and you have to celebrate the good times and that you have to, to let yourself be happy even though there are bad things going on in the world is basically what the like idea of this like tequila sunrise um lifestyle is and they do this for like all of their accomplishments and all of the the good things in their lives and so they they really like bond over this and it becomes this like tradition where anytime anything good happens in either one of their lives they have a tequila sunrise night um, where they they feel alive and they they celebrate and they they celebrate their friendship and their and um, their accomplishments and and just their lives in general um, and it's really really adorable especially because their friendship grows so much um, because they both don't get along with their families they both have issues with 
with their own families, like, um, like biological families. And so it becomes very found family where these, they are moving, moved to live in this new place away from their actual families and they don't get along. They're estranged from their actual families. So they're just, they grow together to become like their own little baby found family. And it's really, really cute. And I would totally recommend the series. My favorite book is actually Belle's book, which I think is the second one. Um, I think it's called Endurance, but it's really good their relationship is adorable and I want to be a part of it <laughs> and I love tequila sunrises so I don't drink alcohol very often um but I do love a tequila sunrise <laughs> okay I have two more so the next one is a uh, court of silver flames and um specifically the female friendship between Nesta Gwyn and Emery so Nesta I don't want to this is the book I'm talking about I'm gonna put it down it's really heavy it's like giant um, so Nesta is going through a really hard time, um, after the events of what happened in A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Wings in Ruin. Um, this is book four in the Akatar series. Um, so after the events of those books, she's having a hard time and she really hates her life, basically. She is not, she doesn't like herself, um, and she is struggling a lot, um, she has PTSD, she has depression, she has all of these things. And she is forced by other characters in the book to go and stay at the House of Wind, which is this like tall building with a like apartment on top of it. Um, and they, uh, and she meets, is forced to have to work in the library of the priestesses, which is in that building. And so she meets, that's where she meets, um, Gwyn, 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 um, that's where she meets Gwyn, um, who is a priestess who has had, all the priestesses have had very tragic things occur in their lives for some, some sort of tragic thing that has made them join the priestesses. The priestesses wear, they can, they can wear veils over their face, they don't have to speak to people, they don't, they're very sequestered away, um, in the House of Wind, they don't have to, like, be involved in society, um, they are, there's no men involved. All the priestesses have had some sort of tragic event that has been the force at the hands of men. Um, so, so Gwyn has her own backstory, her own, um, tragic thing that makes her having a hard time also. And then Emery is the same thing. Emery is a uh, part of the Illyrians. Um, and the Illyrians do not like women. They do not believe that women should be warriors. They have this very barbaric, um, uh, tradition where they slice women, the women's wings so that they can't fly. They can't be warriors. Um, and so Emery had this happen to her by her father, um, who is like a celebrated Illyrian warrior in their tribe. And he brutally and very forcefully and against her will clipped her wings um and so she has a tragic something in her backstory that makes her life hard um and these three women become not only friends but like warrior tribe together they become um they call them the valkyries they call themselves valkyries and they through sheer force of will through the bounding together of friendship and found family through um their own like mental strength and and physical exercise they build themselves up to be these bad ass amazing warrior women um and to realize that just because they have these things in their past and just because they've had these things happen to them against their will they can still choose their own path basically Uh, last book that I wanted to talk about that has a great female friendship is The Trouble with Hating You by Sanji Patel. I read this recently and I absolutely loved it. Um, this is, uh, focuses on, uh, Indian culture and these 
girls are women in Indian culture are um, expected certain things and the main character Leah she doesn't want those things that are expected mainly to get married to have an arranged marriage to have her family like set her up with somebody she likes to have premarital sex she likes to date around um, and she doesn't want these things that um, the culture says that you should and so she's kind of shunned by some of the people um, in her culture in her community um, and she very much relies on her I don't exactly know like their names or anything I just called them like her girl gang like that's what I wrote down um, she has a couple of like four um, three or four very tight female friendships um, that they're like a very group where they all rely on each other, love each other for who they are, they don't expect them of certain things, but they're all within the community so they are all able to understand what each other is going through, which is something that I think is really really cool, is to have somebody who has similar problems to you, she knows exactly what you're going through because it's something that she's going through as well, um, I think is is really really awesome and I absolutely loved the the book I loved the friendship in it I loved how it turned out I loved the love interest in it too the the guy um, it's kind of enemies to lovers and then office workplace type romance but it's really good would definitely recommend it and I think it has a great female friendship um, that is it for this video though those are the ones that I wanted to talk about there are many others so I could do a part two um, but I just wanted to focus on some female friendships because I've been missing my my girls so that's it for this video please give it a like if you liked it and subscribe uh, it really helps out my channel but that's it for it that's it for today I can't talk um, that's it for today bye